feel terrible for the victim's family, especially when there's a loss of life or a, a, a person who's been severely hurt. But I take comfort in the fact that there's a criminal justice system out there that's fully equipped to punish them, and it's not my job to punish them. But yeah, the missing kids cases, that, that, the ones that, you know, you got kids of your own, you stay up at night, you're thinking about that, it gives you a stomach ache, you feel terrible, you maybe you cry. So yeah, I've had those cases. So let's get into what makes the perfect victim then, because I feel like th this might be the most important takeaway from people where mm -hmm. it's what makes a good victim, what are the common places you see with victims, and, you know, adding to that, I yes, what do you see people most commonly fall for and what are ways of avoidance that people can kind of act in their life to not sure, fall victim? Sure. Let's talk about investments because that's sort of where most, most individuals yeah. are going to get ripped off from the people watching here. If, if you can't explain in, in full detail exactly what you're investing in, you shouldn't be investing in it. Start there, right? Because a lot of these investments that are being offered, especially the fraudulent ones, are incredibly complicated in their explanation and that's by design. And so... Um, so a lot of my victims had a difficult time articulating to me what exactly they were investing in, you know, because all they're focused on is the, the rates of return that are being promised, right? These astronomical rates of return. And again, as we said earlier, there's no, the other tell is these victims is, um, is they're happy to fall for the idea of high rates of return with low risk, two things that don't exist in the same universe with each other, but it's a commonality in nearly every investment fraud case, um, they're mesmerized by the affinity group that they're they're within, right? There's no way this guy would rip me off because I'm Filipino and that and the guy is part of my Filipino community. He's in fact he's the president of the Filipino Chamber of Commerce. There's no way that this investment could be fraudulent. And um, I guess those are the big the big ones that I would tell people to watch out for when it comes to investment fraud. And there's just no such thing as get rich quick. If, if a deal seems too good to be true, it truly is too good to be true. Do you think that there should be more push for people to be more financially educated? Yeah, I would love I, like? I would love to see um, see high schools teach a financial literacy class. Yeah, um, you know the the stuff I learned in high school that uh, that I don't really apply to much of anything. I, I mean, put a gun to my head, I couldn't tell you what trigonometry is. I'm you know, but I'm not an engineer, yeah. and so um, it's just the but financial you know the financial literacy or you know how checks work or you know how to pay your taxes i think there, there could be a really good class that's taught to high school kids about sort of basic financial literacy to prepare them for the adult world that they're going to be thrust into as opposed to some of the other things maybe we're spending our time on i think that would be a, a, a good idea but i'm not a public policy guy so i don't know how that yeah works. well no i mean i agree because i think the it's not even people falling for faulty like for Ponzi schemes or investment fraud or anything. It's just people making stupid decision with their money in general. It's like, it is. Yeah. And, and I got that a lot. Like, like you would get a lot of skepticism from the other agents. Like, you know, like why, why do you, these people are greedy and stupid, your victims. But I'm like, listen, you can't, steal money from greedy and stupid people, right? Yeah. In fact, yeah. like stupid people need to be protected. Yeah. No, you know, we don't do that with women. Like if a woman's walking around in a mini skirt and a low top and she gets, you know, it would, you'd be a monster to say that she was asking for it. She deserved it. Well, this person who's unsophisticated in the world of finances, who gets taken by some con artist, lying to them to separate them from their money, I believe they're deserving of your sympathy too. And even if they're not deserving of your sympathy, maybe then the bad guy is deserving of your scorn. Yeah. Well, I also too, most of the time, I mean, you highlight this, it's very... It's often not people with tons of money to just blow. No, like, most of my victims were not super wealthy. Yeah. I mean, they were, they, these were victims who were spending their last penny on trying to better themselves. And, and when you're in, when you're in that level of poverty, that low income, you, it's so easy for people with money to hear get rich quick and be like, that's, that's stupid. Right. Especially in Hawaii, right. Where everybody is struggling financially. Mm -hmm. You know, you got 10 people living in your tiny little house from multiple generations just to make ends meet. And you know, then you look down the street and you see some guy who's living large and, uh, and you know, that envy is a real thing and it's a real driver. And the idea that there's some magic button, this belief that the, that the rich have some secret skill, some secret program that they could get into is, is alluring to them. 